I was always that kid with an overactive imagination. Uh, drawing just was a natural way for me to bring my imagination to life. Growing up in a small town in Muskogee, we really didn't have art as part of the curriculum or anything. My mom was a school teacher and would bring home art materials and crayons and paints and markers. And I would draw my favorite comic book characters or my favorite uh, cars with fire coming out of them. One, two, three, four. My early childhood probably had the biggest influence on my art in the fact that I was always kind of alone. And I was always creating my own little world to play in. Drawing was just a way, in the beginning, for me to just put ideas down, fantasy, to bring it to life. It was just a way to bring my childlike imagination to life. I could make it really happen in my drawings and pictures. I like the motorcycle on it. Thanks. It wasn't really until I guess I was around the fourth grade that I realized that I was better than my friends at. I mean, we all drew, all kids do. Cool. I just kept doing it. I read a lot. My mom, being a school teacher, taught me how to read at a very early age, and probably one of the best lessons I ever learned. Uh, most of my ideas come from literature. Uh, you know, whether I was a pirate on the high seas, converting my grandmother's big front porch into a pirate ship. Ah, we make these. Where's me treasure? Check it to him. My influence, my art influence, came from those children's books I read growing up as a kid, illustrated by N.C. Wyeth and Howard Pyle, The Saturday Evening Post by Norman Rockwell. These are the guys that really just communicated to me. They talked to me through uh, their pictures. They were such good communicators, such good storytellers. Well, 30 years later, I'm still that little boy, uh, very much, who is bringing to life his imagination. Bring me some rum, you scallywag. Now I get paid for it as a commercial illustrator, who, as a story, really as a professional storyteller through pictures, do pretty much the same thing I did as a little boy. I get to relive that childhood every day through different projects. This is a study of Long John Silver for Treasure Island. Well, Treasure Island was especially, I guess, rewarding for a simple reason. My hero, N.C. Wyeth, had painted his version of Treasure Island. And it's the version that I most admired and looked at when I was growing up as a child. So now I'm up there with my heroes. Throughout my career, I've had the opportunity to paint all kinds of different projects. <laughs> Another one of my favorites. Of course, everybody's favorite, every kid's favorite in our generation. Grew up watching The Wizard of Oz every year. Got to create my own Tin Man. You can see his little tattoo right there on his arm. It says Mother, <laughs> his heart. I have Tom Sawyer finding daydreaming about Becky and Tom. Doing a little fish in the sun. Jungle Book, my son Eli posed as Mowgli. I guess my career uh, covers a wide range and a lot of that's because growing up poor, always afraid of being poor, that I, I've developed what I call a kind of puddle philosophy in my art career. I have a portrait puddle where I paint portraits and I have a children's book puddle where I illustrate children's books and I have adult books where I do adult book covers and romance novels and I do advertising puddle where I paint Huggies diapers and then I have uh, my own personal puddle as an artist to create the images I really want to paint so that if any one puddle dries up at least I have something else to go to. I 
I think it's made me a well-rounded artist, and at the same time, it's kept me from putting all my eggs in one basket, so to speak, and being able to make a very comfortable living.